Welcome to episode five of the How Trout See installment of videos. Here in the final episode, we're gonna look at the trout's visual acuity as well as the trout's ability to see in the dark. And we'll wrap up the How Trout See installment with ideas on how you can start to use this information to help you be more efficient and more effective on the water. How good or bad is a trout's vision? In 1990, an article was published that reported that the trout's vision is 1 14th that of normal human vision. Since 1990, many people have extrapolated this and reported that if human vision is 2020, then trout vision must be 2280, which would be classified as severe vision loss. In order to determine if our vision is 2020 or 66, if you use the metric system, we use the Snellen test. We're all familiar with this test where we read letters off a chart and the eye doctor tells us what our vision is. 2020 means that we can see a certain amount of detail in a certain size image at a certain distance. So if you can see the detail at 20 feet, you're 2020. 2100 means that you need to be at a distance of 20 feet to see what a person with 2020 vision can see at 100 feet. And I know many of you are asking, a trout can't read an eye chart, so how do we know? Fish visual acuity is tested by immobilizing the fish and observing their eyes in response to a rotating cylinder with lines on it. We then get a measurement of a fish's visual acuity, usually given in cycles per degree or arc minutes. These values can then be converted to equivalent values for the Snellen test to make it more relatable for the average person. Since that first article was published, there have been more studies with newer methods and more precise equipment. These studies suggest that the trout's vision might be more like 2100 or 2120. 2100 can be thought of as vision that still poses challenges, especially for tasks requiring clear distance vision. And that's the problem with thinking of trout vision in terms of distance vision. We learned in episode three that if we're fishing in a river, particles in the river and the resulting attenuation means that the visibility is usually no more than 10 feet and more often less than 10 feet. Even if the trout had 20-20 vision, they still can't see any further than the attenuation allows. Their limited distance vision might be an issue in very clear lakes, but in most fresh water, and especially in moving water, their distance vision is actually better than it needs to be due to attenuation. When fishing in a river, the trout prefer to hold in or near water that is about walking speed, or three miles per hour. Since we are fishing in that moving water, our fly is traveling at the same speed as the river, three miles per hour. This means it takes 2.25 seconds for our fly to travel 10 feet. With 2120 vision, the details of our nymph may be blurry to the trout at 10 feet. In one more second, it will then be five and a half feet from the trout and in better focus. In one more second, the nymph will be about 14 inches from the trout with even better focus. And in one more second, the nymph will be three feet behind the trout. So the trout has to notice our fly, distinguish our fly from all the other junk floating, the, floating in the river, examine the fly, and make a decision on whether or not to take the fly, all in about two seconds or less. A trout sitting in a seam between faster and slow water may have even less time to make a decision on whether or not to dart into the fast water and grab something. Clearly, hyper-realistic nymph flies are all but lost on trout in moving water. Trout just don't have the visual acuity or the time to closely examine the details of the fly. 
And that's a good thing for us as fly anglers. We only need a nymph that's a close approximation of a food item in order to fool the trout in moving water. This clip is the best that I can do with the camera equipment that I have to approximate what a trout sees under the surface. Above the water, in our world, you can see that the trout's vision would be limited, with distant objects appearing more as a blur. But under the surface, that trout's distance vision isn't as much of a limitation. The trout's distance vision is probably a little bit better than what you see here, but at least you have some idea of what the trout is seeing under the surface. Trout do have the ability to focus their eyes and see more detail up close. Trout actually accomplish this by moving the lens of their eye closer to or further away from the surface of their eye, similar to how we might use a magnifying glass. Once again, because the trout's eye is set up to let in as much light as possible, focusing sometimes comes with a cost. When pushing the lens forward, the lens actually extends through the pupil, exposing more of the spherical lens to the light. In darker, deeper water, this works well, taking in more light. But near the surface, there may be too much light and the ability to focus may be hindered. Trout are also pretty nearsighted, so this ability to focus and discern fine details is limited to only a few inches in front of their nose. In moving water where the trout don't have time to really examine the fly, this is not much of a problem for us. But in slower water, trout will often approach a fly and closely examine it, sometimes even drifting with the current as they examine the fly, often resulting in a refusal. Using all of this information, we can begin to get an idea of where our nymph needs to be in relation to the trout to appear in the trout's binocular field of view, as well as how the nymph might appear to the trout at these distances. In this clip, there was a rainstorm the night before, resulting in reduced visibility due to higher water levels and all the debris in the water. At a distance of about two feet, you can just barely see the black bunny leech nymph. It doesn't really stand out from the rest of the junk in the river. This is at the very end of the drift, and you can see that as the bunny leech is lifted from the bottom, it would be in the edge of the trout's binocular vision, still not appearing too much different than anything else floating in the river. Even the bead head is hardly distinguishable from the bubbles in the water. But when the leech is held more centered in the trout's binocular view, it appears different, demanding more of the trout's attention. In the end, the leech was successful, but only when it was properly placed in the trout's binocular vision. In the slightly dirtier water, the trout weren't willing to move very far, and it took multiple drifts, gradually dissecting the river to get the leech into the trout's binocular cone of vision. In episode one, we learned that both we and the trout use our cones for daytime color vision and our rods for nighttime vision. Rods do not perceive color, so the world becomes black and white in shades of gray. Rods are far more sensitive to light, about 1,000 times more sensitive, which is needed because there is far less light at night and even less light in the trout's world under the surface of the water at night. The amount of light we perceive above the surface is measured in lux. The amount of light we perceive throughout the day can range from 800 lux at sunrise or sunset to 100,000 lux during the brightest part of the day. Nighttime is dramatically different, with levels dropping to 0.3 lux if there is a full moon and 0.001 lux if there is no moon. These levels drop even further if there are clouds in the sky at night. That means that under the surface of the water, there might be as little as 0.15 lux, one meter down, 
if there's a full moon. And that's a best case scenario. With no moon and clouds, it would be substantially less. Trout spend roughly half their life in these dark conditions, so their eyes have developed to handle the darkness. We already learned that a trout's eye is set up to take in as much light as possible. Trout also have about 10 times as many rods as they do combs. So they have 10 times as many rods, and the rods are 1,000 times more sensitive to light. This combination allows trout to have decent night vision under the water at night, despite there being so little light. I know that many of you are probably thinking that trout make better use of their ability to detect items in the water using their lateral lines after the sun goes down. This may be true, but here we're focused simply on the trout's vision. Throughout the How Trout See installment of videos, we've learned that we need light for good vision, and there just isn't much of it at night. We also need to remember that whatever light there is, is coming from the surface of the river. The trout will most likely try and make the best of this by holding lower in the water column. Yet again, we see the trout are on the bottom due to their vision. While rods may not perceive color, the extreme number of rods might allow trout to more easily perceive contrast between dark and light. By holding lower in the water column, their prey will be better silhouetted against whatever light is available. As we mentioned in the previous video, the trout cannot easily switch between using their rods and their cones for vision. It can take up to an hour or longer to switch between the two. Earlier, we told you that trout have a pigment in their eye that helps shade their eyes from overly bright light. When the trout switch from using cones during the daylight to using rods at night, the cones actually, actually shrink, retreating into the pigment, and the rods extend to absorb more light. During this time, neither the rods or the cones are operating at their best ability. The result is that during the switch, the trout's vision is not great. This is often the reason that fishing can seem to just turn off during twilight hours. It's also not uncommon to find trout holding in shallower water at night. As we learned in episodes 2 and 3, water attenuates light. And with so little light available at night, trout may find that holding in shallower water means more light due to less attenuation. There may be very little light at night, but because of attenuation, there will always be more light in shallower water. The size and species of trout that you're after can be affected by the trout's nighttime vision as well. It's well known that very large trout tend to feed primarily at night, especially brown trout. As trout grow larger, their eyes grow larger, and their vision in both daylight and low light improves. So it's not a big surprise that older, larger trout might favor low light conditions where they might have an advantage over the smaller fish that they feed on. One study compared the nighttime vision of rainbow, brown, brook, and snake river cutthroat trout and found the brown and brook trout actually have superior low light vision compared to rainbows and snake river cutthroat. Now, I don't do a lot of nighttime fishing because in the places I fish, when the sun goes down, I get a lot lower on the food chain. But my experience with what nighttime fishing I have done has shown me that it's primarily large brown trout that are feeding at night with the occasional large rainbow. So there you have it, the final episode of the How Trout Sea installment of videos. Over the last five episodes, we've learned a lot about how trout perceive color, how water affects light and color, how particles can dirty the water affecting light color in the trout's vision, and we've learned about how the trout's eyes work and what that means for their vision. Although vision is important to trout, we also need to be cognizant of the fact that there are other factors that influence the trout's behavior 
like energy conservation, safety, or hunger. Sometimes these needs coincide with one another, but sometimes they might be at odds with one one another. Throughout the day, the trout has to balance all of these, sometimes sacrificing one for the sake of others. Vision is just one of the factors, but one that we often overlook. I know, this is a lot to comprehend, a lot of information, and a lot to think about. Why have we spent so much time learning about how trout see? Because the trout's vision can affect the trout's behavior and where the trout chooses to locate in the river. The more we understand about the trout, the better our ability to find where the trout are in the river. I imagine that a lot of you are wondering how you can put this information to use to help you catch more trout. Well, I have two suggestions for you on how to use this information. First, consider all that you've learned when deciding what flies to tie or buy. Remember, trout perceive colors differently than we do, and flies look very different under the surface of the water. Remember that the trout's vision is limited, and when fishing and moving water, the time to inspect the fly is limited as well. All we need is a reasonable representation of a food item to fool most trout in these conditions. The second suggestion is to not overthink it when you head out to the river. If you've chosen your flies wisely, just head to the river and fish just like you normally would. Trying to take all of the information in these five episodes into consideration might leave you standing on the bank trying to consider all of the factors while your buddy is already catching fish. So fish just like you normally would. And if you're not finding success, then stop and think through what you've learned. Ask yourself, what color is the water? What color is my fly? Does the water color change as it gets deeper? How is the visibility? Is it cloudy or sunny? Sunny days might require that you look for shaded spots in the river or deep pools or undercuts where trout can find darker water, while an overcast day might mean the trout are roaming through the water column. Am I getting consistent drifts and dissecting the river, or am I just randomly drifting the fly through the river, hoping to hit the binocular cone of a trout? Remember that there will be different amounts of light and color in the water throughout the day. See if you can identify where the problem is and what you need to do to fix it. At first, it will be a lot to consider. But if you take the time to consider all of these factors every time you're on the water, it will just become second nature. You'll begin to rely more on knowledge and less on luck. And you will be surprised at how much of a difference this can make. Compared to our vision, the trout's eyesight might seem to be lacking. But they live in a different medium than we do. And clearly, they make it work. It's absolutely amazing that trout can find tiny flies in water with virtually zero visibility, or that trout can distinguish food from junk and water like this. Trout are survivors that have no other choice than to make the most of whatever situation they're presented with, and they do it with a nonchalance that we as fly anglers should respect. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.